Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to be looking at the Pioneer A20 amplifier. So background on this dates back to about 2012 sort of era. They did do an Elite series around that time period and within the family of the A series you have the A10, the A20 and the A30 and really the major difference it sometimes catches uh, people out who may be looking for second hand amplifiers. The A10 amplifier didn't support a remote control, so when you look at the front fascia of it, it kind of looks as if it would, but where there should be an, a lens where the IR commands would pass through to the microprocessor, that's not fitted, and there is no motorized volume control on there, and all operation then would be purely manual. With the A20 and the, N the A30, then you do. You do indeed have the remote control function they are universal so you can be use them between each amplifier now a number of these amplifiers have passed through the workshop over the years and it kind of comes down to a number of faults which you typically see and i'll also share some insight with regard to how you uh, reset the protection circuit which is not documented in the operation or manual so the most common faults that you sort of encounter here uh, I'll cover in a little bit more detail in a moment, but let's just sort of take um, some of the technical special specifications for the A20. So in terms of um, power output capability, so power output would be set at 30 watts into 8 ohms, or the amp can deliver 50 watts into 4 ohms. And then from the front fascia, because it's microprocessor based, what you're able to do there is you have a series of push buttons so the micro will just read the commands on there and then in turn what it will do is it will operate um, the protection relay at the back which is for the speaker but it has two of those so on the video you can see that it supports your dual speaker set outputs so you just select A or B or both total harmonic distortion uh, of 1 kilohertz would be less than 0.01% so this is common for uh, amplifiers of this class and then frequency response covering 5 hertz up to 100 kilohertz and total power consumption is 135 watts and then for the inputs you have a moving magnet input so if you connect a turntable with a moving magnet cartridge on there or stylus then no pre-amplifier or equalizer is required and then the remaining line inputs it supports a tuner input cd auxiliary and uh, network and you also have the option then to connect some form of external record device i.e. you can also have a recorder then connected to it and then dimensions straightforward enough so standard for these integrated amplifiers with the 435 height 128 and depth 360 and overall weight is approximately 7.2 kilograms that's for the amp not if it the amp is supplied with all of its packaging material and everything else so just really to come to the stock type of faults that commonly appear probably the major uh, one is the one that you're seeing in this video here but there has in recent times been some changes in some of the amplifiers that i start to see so probably the most common type of failure that you see here are the low voltage power supply regulators and these are a plus and minus 15 volt supply which is used to power the input selection circuit and also pre-amplifier stages and they're made by uh, the Korean Radio Corporation or KRC um, sometimes you see the failure straight away so when you look at the amp and the customer may well report that there's a red flashing light on the power selection button and that, that's indicated to you that the amp's gone into protection mode and they can't do anything to, to sort of change that now this is the bit that's not documented in the operation manual right so if you press the direct mode button on the front of the amp and the speaker protection B button simultaneously within a few seconds you'll leave the amplifier will reset the protection circuit and the power LED uh, will change then to blue and what you need to do is just wait for a couple of seconds now if it's a soft failure i.e. that the amp detected something and then it then went into protection mode and there was no physical hardware failure then the amplifier will just reset and then what you'll find is the uh, appropriate LEDs on the front fascia will illuminate and then the operation would be normal but what I would say is if you see that type of fault where you can purely reset and there's no hardware failure if you are repairing the amps then 
you know, it's logical then to make, you know, a number of tests, which I'll, I'll go into during this repair tutorial. But if after a few seconds you hear the startup relay just de-energize, and uh, I'll sort of mention that in this video, and then it then reverts back to flashing red for the power LED, then you know then the protection circuit has operated. So the first thing that you need to do is really to check the output and the input of these low voltage regulators here. So just connect your multimeter negative terminal uh, to the rear speaker. So this would be one of the ground connections. And then just go maybe on the positive or negative output side. It doesn't matter which one, you know, matter which one you're testing, because you have to test both. And then just reset from the front. Now, what you you may find is that you have an output voltage on one of the regulators, which is correct, maybe plus 15 volts. But when you go to the other one, it's maybe 8 volts or maybe nothing at all. Or you may see uh, physical damage then to the regulator. Um, but in some cases, you have no output at all on either one of the regulators. And that comes probably to the second most common fault that you see. And that is the failure of the primary winding on the toroidal transformer. And you'll know straight away because there'll be no DC input to either of these low voltage regulators. The other one, and this is less common, when you look at the start up power supply board, so where the mains input comes in, you have a small circuit board with a small uh, transformer on there, and it's generating 3.3 volts, which is sent to the microcontroller on the front fascia. And that's permanently active, providing you have power connected, and of course enables the amplifier to switch in and out of standby mode. And it's also monitoring, or it's active, when the amplifier first powers up and the microprocessor will sell the command and then the circuit on the startup board will energize the power relay on there and then that will provide power then to the primary of the transformer and all being well if there's no DC offset or no missing voltages and everything is good then the amplifier of course would just run as normal and you would be able to you know, select different inputs and then use the amp for listening pleasure but those are the three most common types now, what I have noticed from in the last few amplifiers that have come in, sometimes they have the KRC regulators fitted, but now I'm sort of seeing the symbol on the front, and it looks to be a Texas Instrument device. So what I imagine has happened is that during manufacture on the first batches of the amps, and this could be, you know, literally a runner for 1,000 plus amplifiers or more, they had the KRC regulators. And I'm figuring that they had some mortality rate within the warranty period. That got flagged up. They changed the regulators to a different type. And then that's why you're seeing some of the amps coming in for other faults, not with the regulator issue. And that's what I'm coming to see now. So this is really a straightforward repair. It's not difficult for you to quickly diagnose that you have an issue with the regulators. What I would say is if you have one of the regulators that has failed, don't sort of just change the one. You know that the other one is manufactured by the same company. So uh, what I do here is I just change the two regulators out and you can fit, you know, a National Instruments device if, if you wish or um, any other type, you know, readily available. And then uh, remember that once you install those new regulators, you will have need to reset the amp. So remember, direct push button, speaker B, keep them pressed. And then after a few seconds, the protection mode will, will then reset. And uh, all being well, you can then check the voltages on there. Now, just coming back to that point that I made about the soft failure, where you're able to reset the amp um, and you didn't see any physical hardware failure, what I would do as an engineer, I would just monitor the plus and minus outputs uh, of the 15 volt. And I'd probably leave the amplifier maybe running for a couple of hours. You know, just just running some audio through there with the connected load, some speakers on there, just to verify that it wasn't an you know a hardware underlying issue that was causing that that problem. And if it runs for a couple of hours and, and you don't get anything triggering, then you know you can presume then that the uh, that the amplifier is is working correctly then. So a rather short tutorial, um, but that's not uncommon for some of these repairs. You know, they're not in depth, so they don't require too much information um, so uh, as always I thank you for stopping by and then for listening and of course if you've got any questions or, or you need any more information by all means uh, you can email audio amplifier servicing at aol.com all right until the next time take care of yourselves and goodbye